Good morning, Peterborough. My name is Jim Tubb, and it is time for your Sports Break Broadcast on 92.7 C Triple FM here in Trent. The wonderful facilities here at Trent Radio in the beautiful Peterborough, Canada. This show, of course, can be streamed online at trentradio.ca, or you can follow what we're talking about on Twitter at SportsBreakTR. The weather outside today is a little chilly, negative 5 here in Peterborough, snowing as of uh, 8.50. Um, wind chill, negative 12, a little bit of a breeze. Um, it's crazy, half of town is covered in ice, the other half is mush, is the best way to describe it. Uh, wear your rubber boots today, that's... Rubber boots with grip, that's what I would say. Uh, that's the advice I've got. Yeah, it's just, it's coming into spring. Thursday's supposed to be 9 degrees. What's with that? I don't know. Crazy, it's going to be a crazy week for weather, I'll be honest, here in Peterborough. Um, like tomorrow, 2, Thursday, 8, Friday, 5, Saturday, negative 1, like thanks. Um, yeah, just... Wear rubber boots, the whole hip waders, actually. That's what I would recommend, is just wear hip waders the entire uh, week. And then that way you never have to worry. Uh, you're just fully prepared. And if people look at you strange, they're just jealous. That's all it is, to, uh, to be honest. They're just like, oh, that's a really good idea. We should do that. And if they laugh at you, they're uh, laughing at themselves. We'll go with that. All in all, it is still a BEA beautiful day to talk about sports, ladies and gentlemen. And... We have a lot to talk about. Um, last night, of course, the Leafs, the Toronto Maple Leafs, played the Tampa Bay Lightning in Toronto. And um, if you paid for tickets for the game, I'm really sorry. Uh, the Leafs lost 6-2 to two last night. And never were in the game. It was just not a good Leafs game. Um, uh, Kasper Cal uh, started the whole day. We'll start with the whole day. Zach Hyman was not in the morning skate. Nick Patan was up on... Um, the first line with John Tavares, Mitch Marner, whatever. Um, Steve Dangle put it on Twitter that Babcock usually does this. If the player is going to return, he'll just slot right back in. And he did. But it ended up Casper Kapanen and missed the game for the flu. A um, little surprising. Kind of just came out before the game. Uh, and then it came out the entire team was uh, had the flu. To the point that one of the officials on the ice. Excuse me. Did, had the flu and couldn't go, so they played with three officials last night. I don't know if it was two refs, one linesman, or two linesmen, one ref. I, I'm i sure it's that one, the two linesmen. Um, don't quote me on that. I didn't watch the full game. Oh, what a fan, eh? Um, but the Leafs, uh, Leafs team coming off a Western road trip, all of them have the flu, and they caught the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are the best team in the league right now. Arguably one of the best teams of all time, the way their season's going. And Tampa really put it to them. They beat them 6-2, and it just didn't look... The Leafs just weren't in it at all, like I said. Um, I'm not even going to go over like all the goals that were scored. But like the Leafs were missing. Kasperi Kapanen, their fastest player. Jake Gardner, their best defenseman. Travis Dermott, a pretty good and fast defenseman. And then you give everyone the flu... And it's not a good recipe for success, for success. And it was proven last night. And, yeah, there was just no good... Um, the atmosphere around the game wasn't good. You could sense a bit of it. I sensed a bit of it through the, even through the computer screen. Um, and the Leafs knew they weren't that good, I'll be honest. Um, they got booed. The Leafs did again, like they do. If they lose like that... Um, I believe it was after the second period they got booed, but they're still like they still uh, sit fifth in the uh, overall standings. Like this isn't a team that like is falling; they still fit, sit fifth. And the Leafs themselves know that they could have played way better, and that this was a terrible game. Matthews is quoted saying they pretty much just slapped us around, slapped us. Sorry. Um, in the third period, we pretty much just quit. That's on us as players. We have to wake up and do a much better job and hold each other accountable. Uh, Nazem Kadri offered a different response when he said, I don't think so. We're not quitters. We've never been like that. We always finish to the end. Did we want a better overall effort? Of course. Uh, Tampa controlled... This is, I'm going to throw numbers at you now. The Tampa Bay... Uh, Ray, uh, not Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Lightning controlled 55.8% of the shot attempts and 57% of the high-danger scoring chances on a 5-on-5. Five five. 
according to natural stat trick. Um, of course, if the conference standings remain unchanged, Toronto and Tampa would meet in the first, second round of the playoffs should each team win its first round. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning forward Cedric Baguette said we really wanted to show them why we're the best in the league, and they did. The, um, the Lightning have become the seventh team ever to reach 110 points in 70 or fewer games. So there's a chance they could make it to um, 100. Uh, let me do quick math there. 120. Like they couldn't, or did I just say 120? They could get a lot of points. Um, I think each team still has close to 10, over 10 games left. I think some have 16. The Leafs probably now have 15. Um, I'm just looking it up here. But I don't want to say it's a throwaway game, but in my opinion, it's a game that the coaching staff should throw away. Throw away the tapes. Nothing can be learned from this. Nothing good happened in this game. And nothing overly bad happened in this game. Well, okay, I shouldn't say nothing overly bad. The Leafs power play that turned into a Tampa Bay 3-on-1, bad. But what are you going to learn from that on tape? That's what I think. Throw away the tape. It's you got they got to, they have to perform well. Uh, this Wednesday night they play Chicago in Toronto, um, 7 p.m. Pra, Freddie will probably go. It sucks that Sparks was in that. I'll be honest. Uh, I mean, sure Freddie may have had some of those goals, but like, it's still Tampa. It's still the best team in the league, and like, oh, it just kills Sparks. Like any confidence he has has got to be gone. He keeps getting shelled. He got shelled against the Islanders. The team didn't help him. He got shelled against the Lightning here. The team didn't help him. Maybe he had the flu. I don't know. Like, it's just, yeah, it, well, it's not a good game. Not a good game for everyone. And if it would have just ended at the game as that, and the only negative thing around the game was the game itself and what was played, what was played on the ice and not said on the ice, that would have been okay. We would have moved on. We would have woke up today. We would have sighed like, man, the Leafs really didn't play great last night. But that wasn't the only thing that transpired um, in the game last night. There's um, an incident, an alleged, uh, alleged use of a homophobic slur was uh, set on the ice during the Leafs Lightning game last night. Uh, I believe it was in the third period. Sorry. Minute 51 left in the second period. Uh, the television cameras picked it up. Uh, there's a lot of reports going around. Not even reports. People on Twitter. And we're going to get to the whole Twitter thing in a bit. But, like, uh, people on Twitter saying that Morgan Riley is the one that said it. Um, it came out after a non-call in his in what they're saying. In the narrative that is presented on Twitter, it came out after a non-call by a player. A player said it to the referee, said one F word that, um, I don't know how to describe it. I don't want to describe It's six letters long, homophobic slur, starts with F. That's all I'm going to say. Um, said the other swear word in front of it, seven letters, an F. Bleeping bleep. Like, I don't know. I'm not going to say it. There's no reason to say it. No one should ever say it, especially not on air, uh, especially not anywhere. I'm just going to cover that. It shouldn't be said at all. Uh, especially in this today's society, but just in general, no, you don't say that. Um, and it got a lot of stir. The only reason it got picked up, the audio, is because the Leafs building is quiet. Now, I'm not trying to like diminish it. Like, oh, if the Leafs building was louder, maybe no one would have heard it. Somebody would have heard it. It would have got heard. It was said loud, like kind of loud enough, and it was said right near a mic, allegedly. The player that said it was skating right by a mic. But there's multiple mics in the arena. There's a mic between the benches. There's a mic on the glass. Uh, there's lots of mics around the area. But this is what's come out. Is that um, NHL is aware. This is from the NHL Public Relations on Twitter. The NHL is aware of reports that a homophobic slur was used during the Maple Leafs Lightning game. The league is investigating the incident and will have no further comment until the investigation is completed. Two hours after the game, Maple Leafs general manager Kyle Dubas issued himself a statement on behalf of the club. And it says, The club is aware of the report surrounding a homophobic slur used during the Maple Leafs versus Lightning game on Monday night. The issue of homophobia is one the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey club strongly condemns and takes very seriously. We are in communication with the NHL and are cooperating fully with their office. Not much more, like, 
for the Leafs, there's nothing else to say other than we're working with the league. Um, but still, like the NHL has said, they don't know where it's came come from. They're not going into this biased. They're gonna look at all the all the camera they can use. Cameras, mics, everything they can use. Talk to the officials that were nearby all the players and see what they heard. Um, but like I said, on Twitter it is said that um, Morgan Riley is the one that said it. Is what it's believed, on Twitter at least. Um, and I, you gotta like, I don't know how to say this. Uh, but it's, that's who the internet has picked out who's done it. And sometimes the internet's right with who it targets and points out and decides is the bad guy. Sometimes. Or it's not. And they kind of create this narrative that could really hurt someone's image, hurt somebody personally. And they just try to be the hero. I'm not saying this is that situation. Maybe it is Morgan Riley. We don't know. Maybe it's the official. Maybe it's a Tampa Bay Lightning player. Player. Maybe it's a fan. We don't know. It happened on the ice last night. Um, everyone's a hero on Twitter today, last night, late last night, um, and that's how I heard about it. I wasn't watching the game at this point. It was just up on Twitter that people were I'm not freaking out. It's something to freak out over. People were calling it into action, but I believe, in my opinion, they were doing it wrong. Instead of trying to figure it out who it was, they had decided on. They took one person's word of mouth, and that was it. It was that person, and that person should be crucified. The amount of people I saw, it was like, this person should be spent a lifetime from the NHL. Take all his money, fine him millions of dollars. And I'm not saying whoever says it shouldn't be punished. They should be. You can't say that. In today's society, again, you can't say that. That's just not fun. That's not funny. It's not acceptable. And I'm sure whoever said it didn't mean to, but that doesn't matter. You could not mean to do a lot of things and cause a lot of damage. You still have to take the repercussions for your damage. And this is one of them. And this isn't the first time in the NHL that this has happened. And I bet you a lot of money. This will not be the last time this happens, which is terrible to say. Especially if you're a member of the LGBTQ community like you're just trying to watch hockey and no doubt that they like I don't want to say they feel personally attacked but like if this is the sport they love and like they can't even watch it without someone like using that I don't know how to say this properly using them as an insult or like as a derogatory of term like it's just not a good look on the NHL and it's not what the NHL is about or is trying to be about at least. With um anyway, it's not the in the NHL in the past, Andrew Shaw. Um this has happened with Andrew Shaw with the Blackhawks. He said it said something in a penalty box in twenty sixteen. He was suspended a playoff game and fined five grand. Um he later apologized for his action. I remember that was a huge thing at the time, as it should be. Ryan Getzloff said something to a fellow player. Um, was fined five grand, but was never suspended, and kind of didn't handle it well. He just said, oh, I slip, I slip, my tongue slipped, you know, I didn't mean to say it. Whereas Andrew Shaw came out and said, I'm very sorry for what I said. I shouldn't have said it. No one should ever say that. It wasn't right of me. And like apologizing. And for some people, that's an empty apology. I don't know. It's... An apology takes a lot, especially from like someone in the NHL, I would imagine, um, to say you're wrong, especially something like that on a public stature. Uh, I know he took training, which I don't know what that means or what that entails, or if it's like, I don't know. I'm sure people scoff at that, that they would take sensitivity training and stuff like that. Um, I know when Andrew Shaw participated in Pride Night, a lot of people weren't happy, kind of saying, well, he doesn't believe it. Um... And in all of this, I'm trying not to point the finger at Morgan Riley. He's had enough of that. Everyone's pointing the finger at him. But I guess in any situation, you would hope that this just doesn't happen in the NHL. That none of this happened. Nobody ever said it. Anything like that. But it happens. And it happens. And we can't or should not ignore it. 
because it's here and it's not a it's not a good look in the NHL it's not a good look on anybody it's not a good look on our society that it still happens stuff like this stuff like this is said in public um or at all in private it doesn't matter stuff like this should be said it's just it's 2019 like I just it doesn't belong um I don't know what this means for the Leafs it more than likely means if the if a player on the Leafs is found guilty of it I say like a, well I don't want to say it's if someone is if they figure out who says it it wouldn't surprise me if it's two game suspension a fine um the team will probably maybe do something to the player or do something with the player um I believe pride like the NHL's pride activities have already passed like where they in warm up they'll wear the uh, rainbow they'll put rainbow on their stick wear a rainbow jersey stuff like that um supporting the LGBTQ community but it's just just not a good look in the league not a good look in the Leafs and yeah I don't know how to say I guess the only thing I could take away from this is if you're on Twitter if you're on Reddit whatever nothing has been proven yet but everyone's ready to crucify someone as they sh- as like whoever said it should not get off scot free should not get off lightly this should be punished but not everyone has the right angles has the right can't like the right mic or the right audio equipment to hear what was said i've watched the video a ton of t- ton of times i'm sure a lot of people have what i hear could be different from somebody else's it's like the yanny laurel like if you listen to it enough times you can skew it in your own mind what it is if you listen to it one time you can skew it what it is if you go into it thinking oh this is what he says that's what's going to be that's what you're going to hear and you're going to see who you want to see saying it simple as that um and to me i want to say the best part about this is the fans don't decide who said it because if the fans decided who said it we'd be like there it wouldn't be a fair i'll say fair trial for lack of a better term i don't think this would go to a trial but like you know what i'm like it makes sense what I'm saying. Above, like above all else, it doesn't belong in the game. It doesn't belong in society, and that's all I'm going to say on it uh, until we know more. Which I'm assuming by next Tuesday we'll know more. Whether we'll talk about it or not, it'll depend when it comes out. But we probably like it's it's a big enough story in the NHL and today's society that it deserves the light shone on it. And I hope the NHL can move not move past this can work with this and make themselves better make the nhl better it's players everything because you can have all the pride nights you want you can cover everything in rainbows whatever and say you work with the lgb community pride all of this and that but you got to show it and this doesn't show it at all this is a step back for the leaf for the nhl for everyone it's how they move forward that is going to decide everything how the league picks itself up, how the Leafs pick itself up, and I don't know if it's an, like a, an apology. I don't know if words matter. A suspension for sure will happen. A fine for sure. I don't know. This is a situation. It's uncomfortable for everyone. It should never have happened. Should never happen. But here we are, and hopefully it all it gets sorted out. In all hopes, we believe we hope we, he didn't say it. We hope it was something else. Um, there is a lot of Twitter threads going around, too, that he, it is something else, that whoever said it said it, said something else that wasn't the homophobic slur. Instead of, it was a different term. And that's all you can hope for, is that nothing was said. Now, if it comes out that the league believes, oh, he said he didn't say the homophobic slur. They didn't. I'm not, gonna, I'm not singling out one player. They didn't say the slur. There's still going to be people that believe, oh, he, somebody said it. Like... And not believe it. But that's what's going to happen. If they find that somebody said it. There's going to be people that believe nobody said it. And if they find a player that says it. Everyone's going to believe it wasn't that player. Nobody wins in this situation. Because of the actions that allegedly happened. That's all I'm going to say on it. I hope it gets resolved. I hope if punishment is in order. Punishment happens. It's just not a good look in the NHL. And the players inside of it. And... I hope they can move on from this. And I hope this doesn't skew anyone's belief and the way they view the league. Like, I hope this doesn't change anyone from watching hockey or loving hockey. Because maybe for some it does. Maybe this is the final straw. And I just hope it doesn't. Because the sport is good enough. 
to watch hockey is amazing, especially in Canada. It's we love it here. You already know. But to feel attacked like that, I couldn't. I can't imagine what that's like. And I just hope this doesn't ruin hockey for anyone. That's all I'm gonna say on it. And we'll find the answers will come out. That's it. Um, and that's all you can hope for on the situation itself. Now to move past, this is what we were gonna start the show with. Um, again, the injury thing across the league is still kind of hitting hard. Vladimir Tarasenko is out with an upper body injury to be reevaluated in ten days. Um, if you remember at the beginning of the season, he started off really slow. Tarasenko did. He had off season shoulder surgery, but has been red hot of late. He has 34 points in his last 26 games, and he leads the Blues with 28 goals this season. 28 goals, not bad for Tarasenko, but he's expected to get 40. So, you know, uh, a big hit for the Colorado Avalanche. Forward Gabriel Laniscogs out four to six weeks with an upper body injury. Um, it's more than likely that the Colorado Colorado is going to fall out of a playoff spot now. You lose your top uh, left winger. I believe he's a left winger. He's either a left or a right winger. Um, the club's leading point getter. Sorry, cl- club's top left winger. He has three, 33 goals and 69 points in 68 games. Colorado did sit four points back in Minnesota for the second wild card spot. They're probably just going to slowly slip out. And you know what? It happens like that sometimes. They weren't 100% ready to win this year anyways. If they made the playoffs, they would have played Calgary in the first round. And more than likely lost. And I'm sure you get the four extra games of playoff revenue. But for a team that has a lot of cap space, maybe this doesn't hurt them too much. They didn't do a whole lot of the deadline. They're not like Columbus who went all in at the deadline and is struggling to make the playoffs now. And that's going to be a bad look on Columbus if they made the, like the big moves that they did, traded well the draft picks, and don't make the playoffs. But for Colorado, they could bounce back, and there's a lot of good free agents this offseason with Panarin. They don't need a goalie, but Broski, um, Duchesne, uh, Peugeot. Peugeot, yeah, sorry. Um, a lot of good free agents that Colorado could go after. Derek Broussard, of course, they traded for, would come off the books. But, um, and Eric Carlson, who's also a free agent and is also not ready to return at the moment. He isn't a hundred percent, um, hasn't been a hundred percent the whole season with his ankle injury. Um, he will be back for playoffs. He says now it's a groin injury though. Uh, wait, no, sorry. <laughs> Reading ahead. I'm trying to figure this out. What he's doing with now is separate from the groin injury that silent him earlier from the season. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something in his foot. That's what he had the past couple years. And the ankle, once you kind of break an ankle, uh, it's hard to go back on that unless it's somehow, I don't know, if, I'm just trying to think of how to word this. Um, It's hard to recover from a broken ankle because, like, to skate on that, unless you have, like, perfect support in your skates, it's going to be hard to bounce back. And it looks like it's been hard to bounce back for Carlson. He hasn't really been the same player since he broke his ankle. And I guess we, I wish the best for him. He's a good one of the top defensemen in the league. This really hurts his free agency market and whether he's going to get a lot of money. But that's in June. We are July. We still have a lot of time between then. And hopefully he makes it back to the playoffs close to 100%. I doubt he will be 100%. 95% of Eric Carlson. Still a pretty darn good player for the San Jose Sharks. Now some more injuries around the league. Jake Gardner, of course, is out um, since February 25th with a back injury. The time frame is supposed to be set this week for Gardner to return. Um, They're hoping he returns before the playoffs, of course, gets a couple games in before the first round against Boston. Same with Travis Dermott, trying to get him back before the playoffs. Uh, Dustin Bufflin, of course, has been out of the lineup from the Winnipeg Jets since February 14th with an ankle injury. Uh, He did hit a small setback. On his recovery, said uh, Nick Kiprios of uh, Sportsnet. The hope is still in week and a half to two weeks he'll be back. To ca- of course, catch the last few games of the regular season. And uh, James Neal is still about a week and a half out of the lineup. Uh, he's been out since February 14th with a lower body injury. This isn't the time. This isn't because he got hit in the face and lost all his teeth. Of course, Neil signed a big uh, deal with Calgary this offseason. Hasn't performed. He's got five goals and 15 points in just 55 games played. 
hopefully he can come back, kind of prove himself, like, hey, I belong on this team, I belong in the NHL, I belong with that contract that I signed. And just to play in the NHL, the NHL's better with him around him. Um, in other news, Jake Jakob Voracek was suspended two games for his reverse hit on Johnny Boychuk. If that uh, Voracek was kind of against the boards, Boychuk went to hit him, and instead of getting hit, Voracek hit Boychuk. Kind of hit him in the head a bit. He got suspended two games, and he received a five-minute major for the game. Uh, Boychuk didn't return to the game, but he did kind of... He uh, he did something that really wasn't uh, smart. I'll be honest. Um, so I'm just trying to pull up the article. But the NHLPA is appealing the suspension on Jacob Voracek, which I can make sense. It's kind of a iffy hit. We don't see it a lot, or you see it a lot, but like not to that degree. He hit him hard. But um, when after Voracek got hit, he skated off the ice. And kind of pointed at Voracek and said something. Voracek is quoted as saying, he skidded off the ice and he's pointing at me like it's WrestleMania or something. Uh, he said he's going to get him next time. And um, last year, Yaka Vor- uh, Jake Voracek, I keep saying Yaka, but it's Jake Voracek, says um, that he sucker punched, he being uh, Johnny Voracek, sucker punched Nolan Patrick. Um, and then is mad that he's calling that Boychuk is calling him out, saying, I'm going to get you. Um, The Islanders and Flyers will meet again March 28th in, March 23rd, sorry, in Philadelphia. Uh, It's going to be quite the game. Hopefully they can both play. It'll be quite the, uh, quite the fighting match. I'll be probably, wouldn't surprise me um, if both players have somebody taking a run at them, trying to hit them. It'll just be, it'll be old time hockey. And for some people that'll be fun to watch. And for others, they'll hate it because it's old time hockey. It's not the NHL, but hopefully nothing crazy happens. That's all you ask is that nobody gets hurt for something stupid or no one does something stupid. Um, another suspension, Jack Eichel was suspended two games. Yes, yeah, sorry, two games for his hit to the head of uh, Carl Soderberg of the Colorado Avalanche on Saturday. Um, he disagrees completely with the NHL's decision. He says, if you look at the hit and you look at the rule book, I just don't think it matched up. That's not an illegal hit. I didn't move myself to lower into him. If you watch the hit, he was actually at fault for dropping his head. He puts himself in a vulnerable position, leans on or over, and his head goes off my back. His head's on my number. Um, the coach shared the same opinion with Eichel. Eichel's first suspension as an NHL player. You just don't want to miss time. And for both uh, teams, if the fly- Flyers with Voracek and the Sabres with Eichel, two big players that they're missing, as they both push for the playoffs, you can't have that. You need those players in. Of course, they're a bit back in the playoffs, but crazier things happen around this time of year. Anyone can make it, and missing your some of your best players for two games really adds up. Um, in better news, I'll say Mark andre Fleury passed Hall of Famer Jacques, Jacques Plant. Jacques Plant, yeah. For eighth time, eighth place on the NHL's all-time wins list on Saturday. Marc-Andre Fleury has 438 wins. He's just seven back of the legendary Terry Sawchuk for seventh all-time. He is in the... Uh, Fleury is having an amazing season. He has 34 wins, eight shutouts, uh, 9-12 save percentage, and a 2.49 goals against average. Fleury is probably, like, one of the only active guys right now that I could, like, confidently say he could maybe challenge or try to challenge Martin Brodeur for his um, all-time win list, all-time wins like record, although Broders is like 600, over 600, almost 700, I believe. I think it's 698. Um, and of course, second time. I'm just trying to look this up as we go here. Um, second, of course, is Patrick Waugh. Third, Roberto Luongo, who just moved into that. Yeah, Marty Broder, 691 wins. Patrick Waugh, 551. So Marc Andre Fleury with 438 is a bit behind. I could probably do that math in my head, but why do that math in my head when I have a phone right in front of me? For the government of Ontario that put in a new rule that f- uh, f- cell phones are not allowed in the classroom come September, eat it. I don't know why that's such a thing. Elementary school, sure, you don't need your phone. High school, good luck trying to enforce that in high school. They've tried. Trust me, they tried. It doesn't work. Kids are going to bring their phone in anyways. It's just going to happen. Um, Flurry, see, I did the quick math on my phone. You never noticed. I had the phone in front of me the whole time. Eat it, Doug Ford. 
Um, but with Flurry's uh, wins total now, averaging 30 wins a year, which for Flurry is normal, he would have to have another 8.4 seasons with 30 wins to tie Martin Broder. So, you know, eight more seasons at the age of, I want to say 34. All right, he was born in 1984. Great radio right now. I'm just talking uh, to myself here. He's 35. So, eight more seasons. He'll be 43. I believe that was around when Brodeur was done. Oh, you know, could happen. We'll be see, uh, It'll be interesting to see. It'd be amazing to see, actually. I would love that. It's interesting that the top three goalies all time in Merchant Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, Roberto Luongo, if you recognize all those names, they're French-Canadian. Carry um, Mark Andre Fleury is another French Canadian. A lot of the best goaltenders of all time, French Canadians. You know, so if you're from Quebec, make sure your kid's a goaltender. And if you're uh, from Quebec, also don't run into Don Cherry because he hates French Canadians. Actually, someone should ask Don Cherry about that. Like, hey Don, you know how you hate French Canadians because they take because they take jobs from good Canadian boys. That's my Don Cherry impression. It wasn't that good. Um, ask him like, what do you think of like the all time goaltender wins list? Being mostly French Canadians, he'd probably go, "Oh, you know, it's uh, rigged." Taking good Canadian, taking I'm not even gonna try anymore. Taking jobs from the Canadian boys is always his argument. He hates the Europeans, doesn't like French Canadians. Um, I'd love to know what he thinks about that. Actually, that's a good question. Ever meet him someday? Ask him. Uh, I'm not going to. That would probably ruin my reputation. Cost me a job, probably. Somebody else do it though. Let me know. Twitter at uh, at SportsBreakTR. Um, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Clinched a playoff spot before, not last night's game, but on Friday, um, Montreal Canadiens lost to the Anaheim Ducks, and after that, they clinched the division. They're the first to clinch a playoff berth in the 2019. Um, they tied the 2008-2009 San Jose Shark as the second fastest team to clinch a playoff spot in the salary cap era. The 0-9-10 Washington Capitals accomplished the feat in 67 contests. They have 15-point lead to the President's Trophy. They're going to win it. I don't know how to say it. But I don't believe a President's Trophy winner has ever won the Stanley Cup. Will this be the first year that they do? Who knows? This Tampa Bay team is outrageously good. They're built to win now. And if they don't win, it's I don't know what's going to happen. They're the best team in the NHL, hands down. And they could not make it... Th- past the second round, first round, whatever. I It'll be interesting to see. The playoffs are a different beast, different animal, and we'll have to see. Hopefully Tampa can win, just for Tampa. Like, Tampa needs it. Um, There's a lot of teams that need it, but, like, Tampa, they've been good for a long time. Kind of like Washington. They were good for a long time, and it took a while to win. Maybe for Tampa it's going to take a while, too. Uh, Another team advancing to the playoffs is the Humboldt Broncos from Saskatchewan. Uh, they've secured a spot in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League playoffs. Of course, they rebuilt most of their roster following the April 2018 bus crash that left 16 people dead, 10 Broncos players, 1,300 injured. Um, two players, Brayden Cameron and Derek Powder, were the lone survivors from last year's team to return this team. They finished the season with a 35-19, 3-1 record and, 70, and 74 points. Good for a sixth in the league. Um, on Monday, last Monday, sorry, Morgan Gobel, Gobiel, I'll say Gobel, we'll go with that, became the light, late, last Broncos player to be released from hospital after 333 days. His family said in a statement that he has yet to regain his speech or his ability to walk, but they remain hopeful about his recovery. Of course, uh, remember the bus crash a year ago? It hit hard here at Sports Break. It hit hard across Canada and the world. Um... It's uh, the last players at the hospital. That's all you can hope for. Hopefully he regains his speech, able to walk, everything. And it's nice to see uh, the team bounce back. Of course, they're not bounced. They're, uh, the team recover as well as they have from this. I'm sure they haven't recovered fully, but, like, you know, they made the playoffs. Uh, it's good to see for the team. Lastly, here before we go to a quick break, the Canucks signed Quinn Hughes to a three-year entry-level deal. Defenseman. Brother of Jack Hughes, who is most likely going to be the first overall pick in this year's draft. Um, if Quinn plays 11 games with the Canucks this season, he'll be eligible for the Seattle expansion draft in 2021. 
Um, they probably don't want that, I'll be honest. They're probably going to get him to play less, kind of like Vlad in service time. Uh, Hughes led the Michigan Wolverines of the NCAA in scoring the season with 33 points in 32 games. He also won a silver and a bronze medal across the last two World Junior Hockey Championships with the United States and his brother. Um, yeah, it's just another rookie getting to the NHL, which is good. Hopefully he performs well and enjoys the NHL. Uh, like I said, we're going to go to a quick break here from your sports break. We'll get back. We're going to talk about baseball. We're going to talk about the Blue Jays. And does the MLB season's coming up. That's all you can hope for. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back here, ladies and gentlemen, for your sports break. Gosh, sorry. Uh, we're back here for your sports break, ladies and gentlemen. On 92.7C, Triple FM broadcasted through the facilities here at Trent Radio. In the beautiful Peterborough, Canada. The weather outside the deal is, is still negative five. Let's refresh that page. Ooh, click. Negative four and sunny. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Uh, wind chill down to negative 10. It is what it is. That's uh, as of uh, 927. Tw um, not 20 minutes old. Almost 20 minutes old. 20 minutes at five. 15 minutes old. Quick math, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're here for here on Sports Break. Um, before the break, of course, we were talking about the Maple Leafs game last night, the 6-2 loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, the insta after effects of the game and what was said during the game, that's the whole situation with the Leafs and the NHL. Um, the injuries around the league, the push for the playoffs, and of course, got to celebrate the Lightning for clinching a playoff spot already. It's going to be a good stretch of the NHL season. A lot can happen. A lot of teams that aren't in the playoffs right now, excuse me, oh gosh, excuse me so much, um, can make the playoffs. It's going to be good. It's just going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Um, over on the other sport that's about to start up in the MLB, um, some sad news kind of came out uh, about Hall of Famer Tom Seaver this past week. Um, the Hall of Fame pitcher is battling dementia. Um, his team released as of Thursday. Um, of course, the right-hander became a legend with the May, uh, New York Yets, Mets when he led the team to its first ever World Series in 1969. Um, Seaver, who's 74, finished his career with 311 wins, 3,640 strikeouts, three Cy Young Awards, and 12 All-Star All nods. He was inducted into Cooperstown with nine, uh, in 1992, with 98.8% of the vote, at the time the highest percentage in the history of the National Baseball Hall of Fame in his first year on the ballot. Um, the teams, uh, not the team, sorry, the family let out a statement saying, um, Tom will continue to work in his beloved vineyard at his California home, but has chosen to completely retire from public life. The family is deeply appreciative of those who have supported Tom throughout his career on and off the field and who do so now by honoring his request for privacy. We join Tom in sending warmest regards to everyone. Um, for anyone that's battled or has family that's battled dementia, you know, they know what it's like. I don't. I can't say anything about it. Um, it's not a good situation for anyone. And to see a Hall of Famer like this, uh, you think, you hope he doesn't forget who he is and what he did for the game and who he is in the game. Um... Because hopefully the game never forgets him, and the fans of the game never forget him. Um, just a sad situation, and keep the Seaver family in their thoughts, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's just not a great situation. Sad situation around baseball and the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, for the Kansas City Royals, they lost uh, catcher Salvador Perez. This came out last week, kind of right after the show. Um, he underwent Tommy John surgery to repair a torn... UCL, the ulnar collateral ligament in his right elbow. Same thing pitchers get. He's expected to miss the entirety of the 2019 season. Um, it was in a spring training drill last week. He went to two different doctors to um, two different doctors to confirm, like to make sure it was an actual, to make sure it was the UCL injury. And then he went to the number one UCL surgery guy in the end. Um, there's a name. His name. I'll put it up here. Uh, the number one guy for the surgery. Uh, I'm just trying to find it here. Dr. Neil L. Atrache. Uh, he, he performed the surgery and confirmed the diagnosis. 
I believe he's the one who a lot of pitchers go to, or a lot of pitchers go to. I could be wrong. He usually am. Um, so in response, the Royals agreed to a one-year, two point five million dollars with free agent catcher Martin Maldondo. Excuse me. He can also earn another one point four million dollars in incentives based on catching at least hundred games. If he collects all money, his final salary will be three point nine million dollars, which is what he earned last year. Um. Uh, he's the last veteran catcher remaining in the free agent market. Um, he probably wouldn't have got a contract with the Royals. Well, he wouldn't have got a contract with the Royals if it wasn't for Salvador Perez's injury. Um, but it's amazing that a lot of teams haven't picked him up. He's a gold glove winner in 2017. Uh, he's regarded as one of the finest defensive catchers in the league. He hit 225 last year, 9 homers, 44 RBIs between the Los Angeles Angels and the Houston Astros. Um... But he threw it a league, leading 48% of base stealer attempts. He collected three defensive run saves. Um, he was a Scott Boris at the time. Uh, he changed his agency. Um, didn't like in favor. He went with Don Lozano. Scott Boris, is, of course, is the super agent in the MLB, trying to get all his players' money. He's the agent for Bryce Harper, Manny Machado. Um, Aaron Sanchez, J.D. Martinez, Mark Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, all these big names. Um, Aaron Sanchez isn't a big name, but it's a big name here in Toronto. Um, for a Royals team, like Perez is the last guy on the team. Um, well, one of the backbones, sorry, of the World Series championship in 2015. And was going to be one of the guys that were going to market this season to like get fans to come and watch. Because other than that, the team doesn't have a lot um, they haven't had a lot the last couple seasons. Um, they're working on it, though. That's all I can, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's too bad for Salvador Perez. I love Salvador Perez. I don't know how people can't um, or don't. Like, he, it's he's just a good guy. Um, another good guy, Adam Jones, whether you like him or not. He signed a one-year contract around $3 million with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He can earn an additional $2 million in incentives. He spent 11 seasons with the Baltimore Orioles. He's going to play his first time in the National League. Um, probably going to be a starting center fielder or left fielder. Uh, he's a five-time All-Star, of course. Toronto fans might not like him. He's a good player. A good veteran presence. Um, over his 13-year career, he owns a 278 batting average with 266 home runs and 878 RBIs. He's won four gold gloves, but was one of the worst outfielders, defensive outfielders in baseball during 2018. So maybe they move him to left field. Um, in Boston, Boston finally had something negative happen to them. Uh, right-handed pitcher Stephen Wright was suspended 80 games for a PED usage. Um, and his fellow pitcher, Rick Porcello, uh, was very critical on about, uh, Stephen Wright. Um, of course, as of Thursday, the knuckleballer Stephen Wright has not said anything to the team or to the media. And Porcello said, it doesn't change. I feel the same way I felt in the past. Uh, he believes Porcello owes the team an apology, owes the league an apology, and um, just doesn't like doesn't care what Stephen Wright has to say to be on uh, through anything. This is the Red Sox' first major leaguer to be suspended under the league's drug policy since 2004, since its inception. Um, not a good look for the Red Sox and for Stephen Wright, a guy who didn't play last season because of injury. Uh, a guy who doesn't throw hard but is now found with steroids just doesn't add up. It's too bad. Um, Bryce Harper, in his first game with the Philadelphia Phillies, saw the Blue Jays deploy a four-man outfielder, which Harper said, I've never seen that. Um, that's He called it intense. He says he doesn't want to see it again. He, hate, he hated it, which I can only imagine. Um, it would be very difficult difficult to play against you just hit the ball the other way though is easy to say and he did play a walk uh cool walk-up song bryce harper did um he played uh like the intro to um prince of bel-air which like it says like west philadelphia born and raised like it talks about philly uh that's bryce harper's whole thing now um i've got a different idea for bryce harper in the late innings down by like a run or like it's tied in bottom of the ninth Bryce Harper comes up, this is what he should be playing. (laughs) 
get the old Rocky theme in there. I'm sure Philly fans would lose it if he walked up there, hit a walk-off home run, and jogged around third base going, Adrian, Adrian. Rocky, you know, the West Philadelphia. Philadelphia as a whole just loves Rocky Balboa. Who doesn't love Rocky Balboa? Very great movie. Um, sorry, we're running out of time here on Sports Break. It's gone by quick. We've had a lot to talk about. It. Uh, yeah, we'll jump to the Blue Jays here. Um, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. suffered an oblique strain this past week. He is said to miss three weeks with this oblique strain. And for a lot of people, this raised a lot of questions like, oh, the Blue Jays are just going to use this as a, like, um, as a way to uh, get past the service time instead of just sending him down to the minors for two weeks. Now they can say he's injured. Um, I don't believe that. I find that's kind of like an easy way out for fans to say that. I'm sure a lot, a lot of fans I've found are not happy with the service time thing. I think it's great. You keep the guy here as long as you can. He's probably going to hate it, but if he stays... They did the same thing to Chris Bryant, same thing with Ronald Acuna. Of course, Chris Bryant didn't handle it as well, and it's kind of taking it back at the team. Vlad hasn't said anything about it, and now with his injury, for him to be injured like this and for the MLB to acknowledge it, Vlad would have to be in on it, and Vlad would have to fake an injury almost, and I don't know why he would. That's why I believe the injury is real. Uh, three weeks, I could see it being a month. They send him down. They take give him extended spring training to get him back into full motion. And then he'll come up to the MLB sometime. This kid will play in the MLB this season. There's no question about it. For fans calling for like them to call him up on opening day, well, he can't now. He's hurt. And it's as simple as that. So get over it. He'll come up when he comes. They're not making the playoffs this year. A lot of people say, oh, they could make the wild card. I don't know why. Maybe. They'd have to perform, overperform. And in the end, I don't know if that's good for the Blue Jays. Sure, you make the playoffs this year, but you're out in the wild card probably. You're probably going to play one new, one of New York or Boston because one of them's winning the division and the other one's playing in the wild card. But maybe you go to the wild card and you try your luck. And yeah, I guess I'm not saying the Blue Jays shouldn't make the playoffs. I don't think they can. I don't think they will. Just the way the team's built, just the way they play. But we don't know. We just know Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is out for three weeks. He's going to come up when he comes up. And he's going to put on a show. And people are going to expect a lot from him. And I'm hoping he performs. Because if not, watch out. Um, before we leave here, the Blue Jays put out like an inspirational thing to get people Toronto. hyped for the beginning of the season. Uh, it starts with Charlie Montoya, the new manager. I'm just going to play it here. Get hyped. Uh, it's captioned, Teaching Championship Baseball. That's the Blue Jay way. Toronto's an awesome city. Baseball fans here love their team. Charlie Montoya was named the 13th skip in Jays history. We're going to take our chances. We're not going to be afraid to be different. This team is going to play all out. We can control how hard we play, how fast we run, how we grind it out. What we're doing right now, we're teaching championship baseball. That's going to be the Blue Jays way. So maybe they will make the playoffs this year. Championship baseball. It's the Blue Jay way. That's what we're rolling with now in Toronto. Opening day, of course, is March 28th. Blue Jays with four-game series against the Detroit Tigers. Detroit Tigers. Can't wait. Um, buy your tickets now. I'm, I'm going to try. Mom, if you're listening, Mom, Dad, you're listening. I'm going to go to class that day. I swear, if they're not listening, I'm going to try for some opening day tickets. Know what I'm saying? That is all the time today. We have for your sports break broadcast at a 92.7 C Triple FM through the facilities here at Trent Radio in the beautiful Peterborough, Canada. If you've missed previous shows, you can catch up on Twitter at Sports Break TR. Link to the YouTube there. It's on YouTube now. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday at 9 a.m. for another show. We'll talk about the NHL season, the MLB offseason. It's coming to an end, baby. There are 15 days until opening day of the MLB season. Get prepared. Get hyped. Get ready for championship baseball because, baby, it's the Blue Jays way. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, to check both your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Just check them. I'm not going to give you a speech. Just check your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms and have a good day.